My name is Dan McGahey, or my stage name is Danny Ronan. I play guitar. My band is called Force Fed Lies. I started playing saxophone when I was in middle school. I played for the school band. I uh, played that for about two years. Never really fell in love with that instrument. Moved to a new school. Didn't have any friends. Didn't really have anything to occupy my time. So my mom bought me a guitar. And I've been playing that ever since. That was about, uh, about nine or ten years ago at this point. I draw inspiration and influence from anybody I've ever listened to and anybody that I've ever heard. But if I had to narrow it down to just one, I'd say it would probably be Henry Rollins from Black Flag. Just the, the intensity and the energy of his performance and of his delivery was always really striking to me. And I try to take as much of that in and, and sort of exude that in my own performances as possible. Well, I tend to default back to, uh, to all the 80s hardcore punk bands because um, that's so much of what my style is based on, but I'm also pretty fond of a lot of ska music from, from England back in the, uh, you know, the, the early 80s and late 70s, and um, I listen to a lot of metal, mostly for, not necessarily because I love the style of music, but because I, I really appreciate the technicality in their performances. That's something that I've been striving to perform to improve on my own performances for a long time. It's just getting more speed and technique, and uh, you know that's pretty much all metal is. So it's a great sort of reference point. My parents, especially my mom, uh, she loves the blues. Um, I grew up hearing Stevie Ray Vaughan and BB King and all of them just blasting in the house. And uh, actually, when I first started playing. The very first uh, guitar teacher I had was a blues musician, and he taught me a lot of blues fundamentals. It's not really what I would say, you know, I prefer, but because of, you know, blues and, and jazz and their influence on modern rock, I, I'd have to say that it's definitely shaped me. I've been writing music for, oh, I'd say, of the nine years I've been playing, probably the last six I've been writing. Uh, we do, of course, occasionally play a cover song with the band, um, especially when we're in a new place that doesn't know us very well. We like to sort of play something that people will recognize, but for the most part, we write our own, and uh, I'm a big part of the, the songwriting process in the band. I'm going to perform Cycles, which is the first track on my band's new album. This was a song that I, I actually wrote, I would say, 90% of the music, and then it was refined by the whole band when we got together. Um, you know, it was, it was definitely a collaborative effort, but I, I claim maybe more than my fair share of that credit. So here we go, this is Cycles. In the nights, we're feeling that the face getting lost When we try to run that near It cycles, and cycles That fuels the fires of fear I know time exists But I don't believe in today I hold my breath this moment fades away, it fades away. I play music for a lot of reasons. Uh, for me, it's it's very therapeutic for, for me to have this this avenue of expression where I can sort of get all the negative energy out just through performance. And uh, I love to create. You know, I'm an artist. I, I I really love to come up with some new inspiring piece and just sit and play. It's it's just a great I wouldn't say hobby, I suppose, but. 
Occupation, maybe? Playing for myself, um, I don't have to put on the whole show. When I'm playing on, on stage with the band, you know, I'm jumping around, I'm all over the place, I'm screaming into a microphone, um, jumping up and down, sometimes I'll run out into the crowd. It's, I mean, it's a whole entire performance, but when I play for myself, I get to focus a little bit more, I guess, on just the musical aspect of it. I can sit in a quiet room and just strum, come up with ideas, and just be sort of meditative and thoughtful about what I'm doing. So, a lot of my best songwriting sessions have been just sitting on my own playing like that, but it's a different kind of an energy. It's a different kind of environment that you put yourself into. Sitting up on a stage in front of a crowded room full of people and blaring your amplifier and jumping up and down is, is probably the most fun I've had in as long as I can remember. But sitting down by myself and playing alone is probably the most calm I've ever been in the last measurable amount of time. Anybody who tells you that they don't get performance anxiety is lying. Um, it's actually, for me, I find it, it actually is a good thing. Uh, performance anxiety just sort of heightens that anticipation, that excitement. And about five minutes into the first, the, the set that we'll play, which is usually sometime in the middle of the second song, you just sort of feel this weight lift off. You see the crowd start to move, you see them getting into it, and then it's just, you, ex well, I, anyways, I, it just explode with passion. And if I didn't have the performance anxiety, then I think, if, if that ever happens to me, I think that's the moment that I need to reevaluate what I'm doing. Because if I'm not excited, and maybe a little anxious about going up on stage in front of a room full of people that I don't know, then that means I'm too comfortable with it. And that means I need to change my approach, and change my mindset. I'm pretty comfortable where I am, and I suppose that's not the, the best thing to, in the world to be. You know, music is supposed to be about expression and creativity and exploration, but I, I really feel like i found my musical niche, and I like staying in that. Um, a couple of years ago, when I was sort of just looking for a band, I sort of explored a little bit more sort of acoustic, softer, mellower kind of music, and that really didn't suit my taste. Um, I like the fast, high-energy stuff. I like the aggressiveness of our vocals. I like the high speeds and the stop-breaking solos and things that we do. And It's just, it feels really comfortable to me. And I, I just really like where I'm at. When I was 14 or 15, um, I was at a weird part in my life. I had just moved to a new town. I didn't know anybody. And I didn't really have a whole lot, like I said, to occupy myself. Uh, that was about when I first got my first guitar. And at the time, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. You know, I, I loved the sound and I loved playing, but I wasn't really good. Um, keep practicing and don't give up, you know? Stick with it. Stick, keep find something to keep yourself motivated on it and play with it every day. Um, these days I'm, I'll play usually four or five hours a day if I've got the chance to. And uh, if I had put that kind of effort into it when I was younger, I'd probably be a much better guitarist than I am now. But that's not to say that I resent myself for not making that decision, not taking those steps. But I definitely appreciate myself more now for how much more effort I put into it. The 14-year-old me was, was, I guess, a little, not lazy, but unmotivated. And if I had, if I had known then what I know now about what I'm capable of and where I could be, I think I would have been more into it. Um, but practice, practice, practice. It's really what it comes down to.